Hi everyone, in this tutorial we're going to use a combination of different techniques. We use some spline modeling for the first time, we're going to combine that with some box modeling and then finally we're going to add some subdivisions as well to be able to get some high resolution detail from. So we're going to start off with trying to get this shape um, into 3ds Max at a lower resolution and we're going to add slowly um, to it. We're going to begin th this by um, finding out how big the image of this is because we're going to use it as a reference inside of the 3ds Max scene. So first thing that we need to do is locate the file um, that is going to be placed onto Nile. We go to properties when it's, it's downloaded and details and we can see that it's 900 by 780 um, pixels so that will give us the uh, ability to um, get the image in as easily as possible. So we go back into 3ds Max, I'm just going to maximize this and press F on my keyboard to go to the front viewport. So I'm going to draw out a, um, a plane and just to refer back to it again the details we've got 900 by 780 so just to begin with I'm going to go 900 by 780 I'm fully aware that it is out of proportion um, but we can change that later on as long as we've got the unit set up uh, correct we will be able to alter it, the object to the size. Now these settings are wrong because we know that the actual image is on its side so we're going to switch this one to 780 this one to 900 we want to use the move tool to center the object by right clicking the coordinates and from there what I'm going to do is apply the texture to the object. So I'm going to press M on my keyboard which is going to bring up the material editor I'm going to drag out physical material drag out a base color and go to general and then bitmap and then I'm going to find the image that uh, we've got from Nile we're going to then apply it to this through assign material to selection and we're going to make sure that it says show shaded in viewport now if we maximize this we should be able to see a relatively high resolution image however to make this even more obvious we can right click at the top and change it to high quality and also we can right click this little plus sign and go to configure viewports and change the textures to 4096 and the anti-aliasing quality to eight times these will be changed on your own they're probably going to be around sort of 512 ish so if we change them to 4096 we should get a decent resolution the final thing we're going to do is we're going to go views and we're going to go to show materials in viewport as and go realistic materials with maps and those settings will allow you to get the um, the image in at highest resolution as you could possibly do. Last thing we're going to do now is we're going to right click it and go to object properties because we don't want to click on this as we're making it so we're going to tell it we want to freeze it but also that we want to show uh, turn off show frozen in grey because we don't want it to just turn grey we want to see the image itself and we're going to press OK. Now you won't be able to select anything on that image. Now for this next part of the process we're going to be creating the spline element of it so we're going to go F for in our front view of our keyboard we're going to make sure that we've got default shading on so we can see in our viewport the image and what we're going to do is zoom in so that we can see the object now usually we would make an object through standard primitives but this time we're going to make it through splines or, or shapes this is going to allow us to create an outline of half of this object and with using the modifier called lathe we're going to be able to achieve a shape that's going to be similar to the majority of the screwdriver so we're going to click on line and we're going to draw from the halfway point at the back we're going to draw around the shape of the object so that we can get a realistic outline of the object try not to do too many because we want to keep it relatively low poly but we we can add 
to them um, later on down the line. Now when it gets to the straight part here, if we hold shift it will keep that line automatically straight. Now I'm just going to go to the end of the, the silver point here and then I'm going to go to the halfway point down below. The reason for that is is that we're going to have to do a little bit more 3D modeling with the, the front uh, blackened area of the screwdriver. Once we want to close this shape and finish it, we're going to right click and it's going to leave us with that outline. And I'm just going to rename the line up here so that it is screwdriver underscore outline so we can differentiate between them. Now with that selected, we're going to go to up to the modifier panel into the modifier list and apply a lathe modifier. Now this will end up looking like this at the moment, so if we press P on our keyboard, what we're going to need to do is to change the direction of the lathe into the X um, or Y, depending on which um, location you build this in. This is going to give us something that looks like this. We're then going to need to click the little triangle next to the lathe and alter the axis point and bring that down so that we can see the shape of the screwdriver. Now you will see that if we click lathe again and move the object further forward that we have an outline now of the screwdriver that we're wanting to create. But also it's made from 16 segments so if you press F4 on your keyboard you'll see that there's plenty of segments going all the way around the object and that's potentially too many. What we're going to do is we're going to lower that to 12 and that is going to be what our base object appears like. Okay, We're going to stick with 12 so that we can create this nice uh, piece at the front here. Now we don't have a closed object at the moment because we use lathe we have an opening at the back and we're probably going to have an opening at the front of it so we're going to need to rectify that as well moving forward but this segment section allows us to add and take away as many as we like and the lowest resolution you should probably use for an object if you want it to seem circular is six segments but we're going to go with 12 because of the next steps that we're going to do now we can keep this like this for now, we don't have to do any more editing to it for the moment. So what we're going to do is go back into our front view. And now we're going to create the head of the screwdriver. What we're going to do is we're going to start off with building a box. As we have done before. And this box, it needs to be almost the, the width, the same width as what we have for the screwdriver. So if we have a look in the perspective view, what we're going to do is line up the two so that in the press T for the top view, we enable ourselves to line it up to a point where we have an object that is the same in terms of width, just like that. So I've moved that upwards and extended the height. Now in the front view again, what we're going to want to do is we want to change the length of it, I mean the, uh, the width of it. What we're going to do from that is try and get it to the point of where here you will see that uh, it meets these, uh, the bit where we've got the point to begin. What we're going to do is we're going to change these length segments to 3 and the width segments uh, are ok at 1 um, and the height segments are going to be at 3 as well. So we're going to have something that looks like this and what we're going to do is to right click it, convert it to edit poly and we're going to call it our screwdriver head. With it what we're going to do is we can use the select tool to select these six, uh, do, 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 what we mean we've got six, five, five of them at the front, and we're going to use the box next to bevel. We're going to use these uh, functions here to so that it minuses one 
in the outline but it also extrudes and we're going to press that three times. Now what we should have in the front view is a small indication of the, the point that we'll create with the screwdriver but we need to do some further work to it so we're going to go into the vertex selection and what we're going to do is we're going to drag select this top front one we're going to do that with all of the ones to the front outline but we're going to leave the center ones there we're going to use R on our keyboard to select the uniform scale and we're going to scale them down so that the points become closer together and we're going to repeat that with the next part just behind it so that we get a little bit of a circling off effect for these. Now I'm purposely using the inner part of this uh, scaling tool so that we get a gradual effect taking place. Once we've done that we're going to round off this shape rather than it being box like uh, so we're going to select these on the top and the same ones directly on the bottom. Doing that then we're going to use the blue and the green aspects of our, um, our scaling. This may be different depending on the view and we're going to bring those in to make a circular looking object. This is there to fit the rest of our screwdriver. Now we can deselect those and we can move back to working with the screwdriver itself. Now that we have the 12 segments around the front, we also have 12 segments around the opening to the box that we created the head from. That's why we use the three segments for each. What we're going to do though, is if we move this front part, we're going to need to delete these back faces so that we can attach the two of these objects. Additionally, when selecting the screwdriver outline, we're going to have to right click, convert to edit poly, and we're going to delete the inner selected area here, like so. So we open up both of them. However, before we get to adding these two parts together, we're going to have to rectify the back of this as well, so it's not currently a closed object. We're going to hit border and select that region and press cap. As soon as we've done that, we're going to need to uh, connect between here to get rid of the engons. Um, so we're going to use the uh, connect and the cut tool. So let's scroll down and find that. Uh, we're going to cut across here and then we're going to go diagonally from this point to the opposite and then vice versa on the opposite side. So now we've got some nice quads in the middle here. Once we've finished that we're going to go back round to the front and we're going to join the two of these together. Now if you haven't uh, deleted this part, um, delete it and we're going to have to now attach the two of these areas, the, um, the screwdriver outline and the head. So we're going to do that by turning off polygon and we're going to press attach and we're going to select the screwdriver head, having the screwdriver outline selected. Once we've done that, um, we're going to want to uh, select the borders on both and we're going to press bridge. Once we've got that, we can see that we've got a little bit of a, the lines are not too lined up all that well. So what we're going to do is we're going to select the front of the head and we're going to use the rotate tool to try and rotate them as well as we can to get them lined up. Now we could try using um, something like uh, set flow on the, the, uh, the edges but the likelihood is it might not actually do a good job. So let me just show you. Yeah, it's not giving us exactly what we want. Um, so we're going to undo that. And instead what we're going to have to do 
is likely um, scale down the size of the head so it fits the rest of the body just that little bit more now I'm going to do that in these two sections here so I'm not changing the length of it I'm just changing the width and we try and get now um, as much of a, a similar shape as possible now we could try set flowing this one as well but the likelihood is again it's going to be giving us something like that Ugh, that's, that's not very nice is it we'll undo that that's not going to be working for us in that way so now that we've got a finished uh, screwdriver what we're going to do is wanting to add some more detail to it at a higher subdivision so we can add a turbo smooth modifier to this um, and it's going to do a relatively nice job for us because it's quite circular in shape now it's important that we use turbo smooth rather than mesh smooth because then we can actually see the geometry uh, that we're affecting so we add some in this to the detail now the front of it looks quite nice but we want to make additional changes to the rest of it so it looks more like the shape so we're going to switch in and out of edit poly mode and turning on and off turbo smooth to be able to make some changes to the final piece so we're going to click on edit poly and you'll see underneath here we've got show end result and that will show it and make it editable um, as we can see what's happening on turbo smooth so I'm just double clicking this uh, edge here so I can scale it down and edit the final shape now if we can see it then fantastic but if not what we may need to do is to turn off turbo smooth for you to be able to see it to select it so as you can see here it is a little bit sort of uh, really picky um, about where you select on it and it's quite difficult to see it so sometimes what we need to do instead is turn off turbo smooth and we get to see it a little bit easier um, before we select it and then we can alter the shape again so what we're doing now is making alterations to the shape of the object at the high resolution uh, detail and that will also simultaneously give us a low resolution to make some changes to as well so I'm just adding in here some connects through some ring selections and just moving them and scaling them um, just so that we've got something that we want in terms of the shape. So I'm just going to do a couple more changes. Now in the middle we have another part that we may want to change. So I'm just going to go into the front view in a second uh, just to, to make that change. Um, I'm just gonna, So I can see where it is. If I press Alt X on my keyboard it will make the object go see through as you can see now and then I'll know which edge I need to select and where um, to do that so I can see now if I turn off turbo smooth and I select this one here that is the uh, the area I'm going to need to change so I could use a chamfer um, to add this or I can use the ring select with a, uh, a connect instead if it's not going to appear This will enable us to add that further detail um, into it. Unfortunately, to change the shape of an object, we do need to keep adding certain bits to it um, and turning on and off this turbo smooth modifier um, and moving and scaling these bits um, so that we can see um, the changes that we make. So I'm just spending some time using the turbo smooth subdivision tool just to make the object look like I want it to I'm giving it that um, little ridge at the, the front there and I'm going to put one uh, at the back as well as you can see um, the blue aspect of it is a little bit different to the black so I'm just going to do that last one so switch in between turbo smooth to see that happening like so. Now once we've done with it what we're going to need to do is we're going to need to make a copy of it and uh, we need a lower resolution version so you can see here we've got the low res if we turn off turbo smooth and if we turn it back on we'll have the high res. So if I select this edge here um, I double click it, press control and backspace, we can get rid of some of the uh, topology but it's not going to do what we want it to so we won't bother so press control Z. What's important to remember is that any changes we make to one will make changes to the other. 
Now holding shift on your keyboard, we're going to use the move tool and we're going to generate a copy and this one's going to be called the screwdriver low. And this one we're going to delete the turbo smooth from it. Now we have the high and the low. So this one we're going to rename it to screwdriver high. And what we're going to need to do is to make a reference shape that is going to be the size of an actual screwdriver. So I'm just going to go and make a box. And I'm just going to go with uh, a box that's 25 centimeters um, by 25 by 25 and then shrink both of these down um, to correlate with that. Now once I've done that, what I'm going to do is select both of these objects and I need to get them to share the same space so that we are going to scale them uh, uniformly. So I'm going to click on one of the objects and I'm going to center that to the origin point. And I'm going to do it with the same for the opposite because it is a copy. Now they'll share the same space, I select them both and I start to use the scale tool in all directions to bring that all the way down to the size of the object that we have in terms of length. Now I'm just going into the front view to change that and just use it as a bit of a reference. Until I'm relatively happy with it. Right, so something like that. Once I've done that to the scale that I want I'm going to uh, right click in my, anywhere in my scene, press un, uh, unfreeze all, click the uh, image and I'm going to delete it. I'm going to also delete the reference box and now I'm going to select each of the uh, screwdrivers and place them at the 0, 0, 0 in the origin point so that they're sharing the same space. Now what we will need to do is export the high resolution and we're going to need to unwrap the low resolution for the next stage of texturing. Thanks.